Consumer confidence dropped 6% today, and I know who's to blame. The stock market, it's falling. Is this a prelude to something really scary? And Woolley Parsons buying an American company, is this a buy or is this a dumb, dumb buy? I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Ricard. And, and we're, we're mad, mad, mad about mad. money. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the fact that consumer confidence dropped by 6%. Paul, you didn't seem to know that little number. It's quite Look, surprising. I, I, it sort of flipped past me, Peter. I get a bit blase about <laughs> some of these stats. You're a much more a stats guy. I'm a stats I'm, guy. I'm, I'm a markets guy. Stats You're a markets guy. Look, uh, look, I guess Wentworth by election, yep. government. We're going to have an election at some stage. Is it this side of Christmas? Is it next May? Bill Shorten's Bill coming. Bill Shorten, scary stuff. No <laughs> negative gearing, capital gains, tax discount, changes, changes to imputation, credits. The retirees, yeah. We're in October. Um, you know, mm. look. It, Crashes con- happen in October. Contrast that with the unemployment data last Thursday, just mm. a week ago, of 5%. Now, again, Ab- huge number. Huge number, lowest in seven years. We know there's a bit of an aberration with any of the data that's collected by the ABS because the participation rate, that's the number of people who are available for work, that also fell, which yeah. is a bit strange, but yeah, you know, 5% is a good number. So, I look, I think consumer confidence is just out there. It's just. Look, I don't think, don't take too much notice of the 6% figure. Yeah. A, a, weekly, a weekly number is not yeah, hard to, to believe it's in. It's like it? a news poll where just no one believes it, right? right. Sorry, a news poll's not too bad. It's like the <laughs> Fairfax, it's Ipsos, Ipsos. Poll, and no one believes that, right? Sorry. <laughs> All right, so, so the thing is this. I, I think the scariest part is that the media is continually talking about house price falls. I love the fact that Chris Richardson from Deloitte put it in perspective yesterday. He actually did say house prices are falling at $1,000 a week, which of course is scary. Yeah, that's a scary number, That's right? right. But in reality, when you think about it, it's, it's only he's only taken the median house price and looked at what's fallen, say, 5 or 6% and worked out, oh, that's $1,000 a week. In actual fact, that's 50 grand, and on a, on a $2 million property, that's nothing over, over a year. So in reality, I think that's been the scariest thing for, uh, for consumers. I think people need to go back and look at some historical charts about what house hysterical prices... Hysterical or historical? I think I said historical, <laughs> but, did. I, but, but I could make it hysterical. Some, some what house prices do in Australia, yeah. right? They typically, they don't do a lot for a while, yeah. then they have a big surge, and then they go down a little bit for another another five yeah. or six years. But yeah. it's the, we haven't we don't do cliffs, yeah. right? It's not quite like the equity market. House prices didn't fall off a cliff during the GFC. Yeah. They just went flat for a while. This yeah. is what we're in. We've, we've had four or five years, strong years of growth, 80% growth in Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. It's not surprising they're going to edge down 10 15% over the next couple of years. Yeah, okay. okay. They, they did ring the bell. We, we better go well, on. Well, they haven't fallen off a cliff. I don't sure. think it's going to happen anyway. We should move Give on. Give that bell again. All right, yeah, now, yeah. stock market. You've talked about falling off the cliff. The stock market, our, our market stand about 6%. I think, uh, I think the Russell um, index in the US for small caps down about 10%. So, Paul, is this a prelude to, to a scary crash? This is October. I, I don't think so, but speaking about cliffs, stock markets do occasionally fall off the cliff. That's yeah. simply because they're so much more transparent yeah. and, and, and quicker to react. But look, uh, October can be, as we know, challenge month in the markets. The US has currently got company earnings seasons. They're not going too badly. We've got the overlay of Trump. The trade wars are going to get bad, worse, who knows. The I mean, poor old Saudi journalist is not helping. The poor helping. old Saudi journalist, the mm. midterms in, in two weeks' time in the US. I yeah. don't think this is a prelude, but, you know, I mean, the US market's had a great run and yeah. at some stage it's going to come to an end. I, yeah. I think it's too early to call that. I think this is still uh, approached for, as, as a dip. Yeah. And, uh, a and buying opportunity a buy- eventually, but not yeah, now. And patient investors are going to be rewarded. So whether you, you're, you put your toe in the net water in the market day or just set out the next week or two yeah. as we go through the midterms, hmm. I'm not putting a lot of cash in the market just yet, Peter. I'm yeah. still waiting. But I'm, waiting. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing the other thing, and that is I'm not lightning. I'm, yeah. I, I think that was... I don't think this is the chance where you bail out of stocks yeah. just yet. I, I reckon after the midterm election, there'll be a clear indication whether you should buy or wait. But at least there'll be a clear indication after those midterm elections and we'll see how Americans rate Trump. Let's go to the final one, Paul. Wally Parsons, I know it's not an exciting story, but this is a pretty significant company in Australia. And they've gone after, what, they're spending about $3 billion, aren't they, buying a division well, a bit, of the US energy company or A bit something. more than that, 3.6 billion US, so oh, it's almost close. Real dollars. Up. Real dollars, they're getting up there almost $5 billion in Australia. Wally Parsons is a big employer locally, right? Mm. It's a huge resources company in terms of providing services to the resources industry, mm. not just in Australia but overseas. Yeah. It's what has been one of our really unloved stocks. It had a horrible 
period over many, many years. The share price fell. Now it's back almost to a high again. Yeah. It's been a real darling over the last 18 months. And now months. they're trying this little stunt. And now it's buying uh, the uh, chemicals and resources division of a company called Jacobs Energy in the US when the mm -hmm. Aussie dollar's down near 70 cents. And the history of us buying stuff overseas, yeah, not good. Doing a big rights issue, or one for effectively one and a half rights issue, a stock price is high. That's what, it, what companies do when their share price goes up. They raise capital and, yeah. and make acquisitions. Do, Look, you, do you hold Woolly Park? I don't. It's, it's, do it's I? a company I've missed. I, I haven't been a huge fan over the medium term. I think it's just the odds are against this. Yeah. Being you big. wish them luck, but they're them going luck, to need luck. Despite the presentation and they've worked out their integration plan and all the synergy stuff. Mm. Australian companies, top of cycle almost. Mm. I don't know, I can't, uh, I'd be a little wary. Yeah. Boral got it right and Boral didn't look like they were getting it right, but they did get it right. But so many companies have screwed up when they've gone overseas and this one looks like a screw up waiting to happen. Well, let's not put the, the mocker on just yet, but uh, I think uh, Worley Parsons shareholder, if you've backed them all the way up, mm. do you put more money in at the moment? I don't know. You'd yeah. have to be you have to be thinking pretty hard about uh, this, uh, this yeah. rights issue. Well, I'm thinking hard about it. I'm Peter Switzer. I'm Paul Ricard. And we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money. Shh. Content has been prepared without taking account of an individual's financial objectives, needs, or financial situation. It does not constitute formal advice. Before acting, any individual should consider the appropriateness of the information having regard to the individual's financial situation, needs and financial objectives. Past performance is not a guide for future performance. AFSL 286 531.